This time I've got a vintage GE clock radio from the mid-1970s, I'm going to guess, according to the date code anyway. Uh, this is AM only, but unlike most clock radios, this is not a flip clock or a digital clock. This one's actually an analog clock, and it uses a good old synchronous motor. You don't see these around much these days. Let's check it out. This is an old GE clock radio from, I don't know how old this would be, but I'm going to say it's probably 50 years old or maybe older. It's AM only. It does not have an FM band, so uh, this would have been made prior to FM radio becoming popular. Date codes for GE and RCA, um, the way they coded them, the first digit was the day of the week. So one being Monday, seven being Sunday. Second was the year that it was made, the last digit of the year. Uh, would make this either 1975 or 1985. And 32 would be the 32, 32nd week of the year. Starting like January 1st would be the first week, 01. Right, and January 8th would be in 02. January, you know, the next one up 03. So every week they increase that number by one. So we can figure out that this radio was made on a Friday, 32nd week of either 1975 or 1985 is when this one would have been made. 85, I think, would be a little bit, a little bit late for an AM only radio, but I guess it's possible it could have been made as late as 1985 or as early as 1975. This one needs a bit of a cleanup. Looks like the clock is working, which is good, but the thing is filthy. Does the radio work? In the latest installment of his Wakeland Thriller series. Well, it kicked in there. All that and more is progress. I'm Ryan B. Patrick, and this is the summer edition of the next chapter. It didn't work there until I moved the tuning knob a bit. You probably do a check over. Okay, well, let's, we'll take this thing apart and just give it a good once over and uh, see if we can make this thing work a little bit better than it currently does. Oops, that's the wrong size screwdriver. Let's just try the right size one. surprised that at the age of this that it only had an AM radio because uh, I mean I had a, a general electric flip clock radio much earlier than this uh, late 60s and it had an AM FM radio in it I'm curious as to whether this has got a transformer type radio or whether it's a hot chassis because a lot of these radios uh, they just powered them up with a resistor and a rectifier and they ran with a hot chassis and this might be one of those I guess we'll find out once I get the back off of it or the front off or whatever comes off on this I think it's probably the front pops off on this one and it does and it does have a transformer okay oh, I, was, I was fully ex no wait a minute it doesn't have a transformer it's a hot chassis that transformer is just for the speaker undo the, the screw that holds the speaker and so that I can remove that and we'll also get some more slack on the um, power cord here. 1.6 watt 4 ohm speaker. The reason the audio was likely not working was that screw that fell out. That's one of the speaker mount screws and it was likely shorting out on the board and it fell out when I took it apart. You can see it lying on the bench there. Out and I'll just remove this a strip of foil in the side here. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. It's a heat shield. I love the strain relief, just to coil the wire around and clamp it down type of strain relief.
I guess if it works. Uh, this is the dropping resistor for the radio. So the radio itself is directly powered. There's no transformer. This is the, the transformer just for the speaker. And um, there's the clock. The synchronous motor there. And again, this resistor, if you notice, it's directly connected to the AC line. So you've got one wire going to the neutral line or, or hot, depending on what way you plug it in, because I don't think it's got a polarized cord, which it does not. It does not have a polarized cord. So this could be the hot and that the neutral or vice versa. But one wire goes directly down to the radio. The other one goes through this resistor, which drops down the current. It's still going to have the full potential, 120 volts on it. There's a switch right down here. This is a switch that turns it on and off. And uh, when the timer goes off, when the alarm goes, that switch would turn on and that powers up the radio so on the radio here we're gonna have a couple capacitors maybe we'll change those out because I'm sure that they probably could use changing and there's only a couple of them on here but uh, basically um, AC powers this radio and it'll operate at 120 volts of course the voltage will be ending up being a lot lower than that because they're going to probably have a zener diode in here to limit the voltage I guarantee they'll have a zener diode and this, this is the resistor that just drops the current down. So you got a rectifier here and uh, I'm sure there's a zener in here somewhere. Now whether I'll change this, uh, debating whether I should pull the board out. I see a tuning string here but I think that the, the uh, radio probably lifts off and the tuning dial and everything stays up front. So let's just remove the circuit board so we can inspect this and check it out. I just want to see how to get the circuit board out. I know that the tuning lifts off. It doesn't take the whole string and everything with it. But the uh, the volume knob is kind of sticking here. I don't want to break anything. So is there another screw by chance? Maybe there's a screw that I've missed. It should just lift off. Or the knob pops off from the front. One of the two. Maybe the knob comes off from the front. I'd like to take this glass off and clean it if I can. There we go. That comes off All right now. Should be able to lift the board out now. There we go. All right, here's the radio. It's revision whatever. Not even marked. But there's a nice simple little radio board. Um, power comes in via the black and the brown which is here and I don't know what the purpose of the little spiral and the uh, if someone knows why that is like that let me know it, it must be resonance to filter to take out some ripple or something there's a diode right here and a little ceramic cap on it and then it goes back to this resistor here and this capacitor 100 at 35 volts so something has got to limit that voltage down there's got to be a zener diode in here somewhere so the main diodes there where is the zener diode that's our rectifier there's got to be a zener in here to limit that thing down you would think there's a zener diode I don't see one hmm 100 microfarad 35 volts is the cap that's that's the main filter it's right here going to the ground side which is the one that's got the brown wire connected to it right there the uh, black wire is connected to which goes to the switch is connected to this one so this is hot hot comes in here goes through the diode here rectifier diode so this is our, our positive voltage here it's got to be a zener diode, but I don't see one. I see I see a ceramic cap that goes right right here. This ceramic cap is across. Where's it across? It's between here and looks like it's between there and the AC side actually. It is. It's between the AC side and the DC side. So there's a ceramic cap across there, and there's a diode across there. There's nothing there. This side comes up over here. What 
what's on here. There's another ceramic cap here, and then what is on this one? That's going to the transformer. It's going into one, one uh, looks like one lead of the transformer. And then from there, that's going to go to the audio amplifier uh, uh, transistor for sure, because it's going to be a it'll be a class A type of amplifier, and the the uh, transformer is what's isolating the speaker. So this is the primary winding across here. The secondary is right there. So there's no regulation on this. It's just it's just whatever voltage drops down to through this big resistor is what the unit is operating at. There is no voltage regulation. But I think this 100 microfarad cap probably is due to be changed. A couple of them are probably due to be changed on here just from the age of it. So we'll check them and uh, replace as necessary to see if we can get this thing performing like it did when it was new. Fat chance of that, right? But hey, you never know. Old vintage radio. We'll get, the, uh, we'll get the ESR tester out and just test some of these caps and see how they look. So let's just check out some of these caps and see how bad they are. Or if they are bad, they might be okay. One down here. What is that one? 0.4. I think that one's okay. A little 10 microfarad at 16 volts here. 5.7. Yeah, I think that's okay. Because a new one would be 8. So uh, that one's okay. How about this one up here? 2.5. I would say that that's okay. How about these ones over here in the power supply? 0.13, that's good. How about this one? This is the uh, main filter. 0.15 for 100 microfarad, 35 volts. 0.15 is um, excellent because a new one would be rated at 0.32. So there's no capacitors that are bad in this radio that I can see. Excellent. Okay, I guess I don't have to change them. Where's this one? There's another one over here. Just gotta see where the leads go down. Looks like it's right across here. Six. That was also probably okay. So I guess the, the caps are okay on this one. I was thinking maybe I was gonna have to change a few caps, but uh, they all look to measure well within spec, so um, I'm gonna leave well enough alone. I'm not just gonna go and change them for the sake of changing them because there's nothing wrong with the originals. So let's just pop the board back in. I will clean the controls out. Well, actually, I, I, I'm sure there's more wrong with it than the controls because when I wiggled the tuning control, it cut out. So we may have a uh, we may have a bad connection on here on this board or a crack. this up again. I'll try powering this up and I'll just try flexing the board a bit and try not to electrocute myself because obviously I'll have 120 volts across here. I'm plugged into an isolation transformer but still um, on line voltage yeah I could get a nasty shock if I'm not careful. As you can see these traces go right to the edge of the board too so one has to be relatively careful when handling something like this. Just do an inspection first and see if I can see any noticeable connections that are uh, no good, but they all look to be actually well done. Oh, well, there's one here. That one. This one right here on the volume control doesn't look to be oh, maybe it's tacked down here. It's hard to tell. See if it moves at all. That one maybe it, it looks okay actually, but there's another one up here that looks kind of a bit questionable. Maybe we'll just uh, 
reflow this one here. That one looks like it might be a little bit, uh, it's questionable looking. The others, I don't see anything really wrong with any of them. Almost looks like that's close to touching, but I don't think it is. That was the one that I was questioning most. This other one here looks like it's kind of close to the other one, but I think we're okay. fix the input to my uh, transmitter. It was tuned to a dead station. Smell this resistor heating up. I wonder what the uh, voltage we're dropping across this is. I'll just check that and see. AC volts. We are dissipating how much voltage across here? 54 volts. 55 volts almost. So on the DC side of things, if we were to measure the DC voltage that this thing's running at, I should be able to measure that here across 21 volts is what the DC voltage is on the uh, rectifier side. I can, of course, go over and measure that back to here as well, right, to the neutral side here, 21 volts. So that cap is well within its rate range, which is rated at 35. And they, that's just based on the amount of draw that uh, this thing's drawing. Because there's no, I don't see any uh, Zener diodes in here that are clamping that voltage at that. That's just floating. And that's just the resistance value here. It's a high enough value that the current is very low and it, of course, causes the voltage to drop accordingly for the drain of the unit itself. control needs to be cleaned, we'll clean that. Like that's probably about the only thing this thing needs is a little bit of cleaner into the volume control.
like this much space and to not have to like show up seven hours early to actually get a spot that you can see is wild. We're okay. Like, I think if I remove the knobs here, I should be able to maybe remove the glass and clean it because it's filthy. I'd like to take this glass off if I can and just give it a good good cleaning because it's as I say it's it's really really filthy uh, it should pop off here somehow I think it's usually held in place with little clips I'm unplugged by the way so I don't have to worry about getting jolted I should be able to get that front glass off so that I can clean it inside and out because I say it's 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 grimy on the inside as well I'd like to make this thing uh, spotless if I can. I think I can probably dig this out. There we go. Alright. Okay, I'm going to take this in and give this a wash and get this thing looking clean and then we'll clean up this. The inside's not too bad but this is just, as you can see, it's just absolutely filthy. So let me take this in and clean this up and make this shine like new. And then we'll clean up this as well trying to make this thing look presentable. Cleaning off the edge here. I took the glass inside and washed it with dish soap. It was pretty, uh, pretty disgusting before. It's a lot cleaner now. Set the base, uh, set the glass back in, and just pop it in place. And uh, of course, there's some dust in there. I gotta dust that out. So we'll just take this out again. Try to get the dust off the back of that, uh, the back side of it here. It's a lot better than it was. That's for sure. Now it's kind of presentable. Well, that looks a lot better than it did before, that's for sure. Not as grungy and grimy as it was before. Because it was pretty, pretty dirty. Okay, I'm gonna start putting this thing. I guess we should probably clean the cabinet up too. It's uh, well, it's not not as bad, but it still could use some cleaning around the edges here. I think probably put the speaker back in now and pull the cord tight and get that ready to reattach. I don't think they'd be permitted to sell a radio like this today. That's line powered like this. Today, everything would have to be uh, isolated. But that's the way they did things back in the 70s and even into the early 80s, I'm sure. Was uh, It was uh, totally okay to uh, make something like this that you could electrocute yourself on. Well, the speaker. One of the, the uh, speaker tabs was broken off, so I just put it on one of the other ones. There's four mounting holes. There's only got two of them that they use, and uh, one of them was broken. So I'll just use one of the other ones, attach it on the opposite side. There, that'll hold it.
whole point in keeping a radio like this alive is not so much for the radio, it's for the electric clock. Good old mechanical electric clocks. You don't see too many of them around these days because everything now has gone battery powered and everything's gone to quartz and and battery powered clocks. So you don't see too many of them around anymore that are actually powered by an AC synchronous motor such as this one. So that's one of the reasons to keep an old timepiece like this running. It's just because of the um, the nature of it just being a, a mechanical timepiece. It's like a watch that I have. That I've never shown you guys. I'll maybe I'll wear it in a video. But it's an automatic. When you shake your arm, it winds. It's an it's a real old one too. I might show it off on another video at some point because I don't think I've ever worn it on camera before. Anyway, um, this one's back together. Playing my test transmitter, no problem. My test transmitter hums with it, I don't have a ground on it. Set it to wake to music when I turn the alarm time back here, it should turn on. I guess you have to reset it when it turns on. It's kind of neat, so when you set the alarm, when it gets to the time, I set it like to here. So that's that's that. Good old GE vintage clock radio from, you know, I can say the late 70s, mid 70s. Yeah, well, again, it's either it's either 1975 or 1985. I'm thinking it's probably 1975, but there you go. Looking great. A lot cleaner than it was when I got it. That's for sure. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.